Welcome back. I was planning on doing a quick tutorial on how to create a Hugo theme, but there is quite a lot of stuff that's involved in creating a full theme. So I thought we'd just get started in this lesson today by showing you how to create a theme, how to link your CSS and how to get some posts actually displaying on your homepage. So the Hugo theme that we've been looking at so far is this uh, one we downloaded uh, from GitHub called Paper, which is, is quite good, uh, but it's quite simple as well. So you might want to create your own themes uh, to customize your site. Uh, so this is what our demo Hugo site looks like at the moment. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is create a brand new theme using the Hugo tools. And then I'll show you how to link your CSS and get some posts appearing on your page as well, on your own page. So let's head on over to Visual Studio Code. And the first thing we want to do is to create that new theme. And what it basically means to create a theme is to have all of these files that we've got in this folder at the moment, such as we have for the paper theme that we've downloaded. But it's a little bit of an effort to go and create all these things manually. So a good starting point is to use the Hugo tool, uh, the command line interface to actually uh, create the uh, skeleton of the theme for you. So you do that on the command line. Let's make this a bit bigger for you. So we say Hugo new and then theme. And then all you need to do is give the theme a name. So uh, because this is going to be for the uh, demo site that I'm working on, I'm going to call it the codebook-theme. And what that will do in our themes directory now, uh, if we just minimize the paper theme, you can see we've got another folder in there called codebub theme, and it's got all of the basic files that you need to get started with uh, to get your theme up and running. So first thing we want to do is actually start using this theme. Uh, so we do that by telling Hugo that we don't want to use the paper theme anymore. We want to use this uh, new one that we've got set up. So that's in your config.toml file. So here we've got the theme and it's just the name of the directory. So previously we had paper. So I'm just going to change that to the new theme that we just created. And if we save that and then go back over to our page and just uh, reload it. Uh, in fact, we might just need to restart the uh, Hugo server again. Just grab the new port number. You'll actually find that the theme's not doing anything. We're getting this page not found. Uh, message at the moment and that's because we've just got the skeleton of the theme in there but we actually need to flesh out some of the files before we can actually see any data uh, so let's just go back over to Visual Studio Code again and let's have a look at the layouts of directory that we've got in here for the new theme that's created so the reason we're saying that page not found at the moment is if we go to the index page you'll see it's completely blank uh, if I was to put a heading level 1 tag in here at the moment and just put some text in there if we go back over to the browser and reload it, you can see that uh, content is appearing. Uh, so that's the reason why you're seeing the page not found at the moment is because we just haven't got any content to actually display. Uh, but we'll come back to the index page in just a second. I just want to run you through quickly some of the uh, different files that we've got in here. The first is this uh, default folder and you've got the, the base of .html file. And this, as you can see, gives us the actual structure of the document that we're going to be uh, seeing on each and every page within our Hugo site. So things like having the uh, doc type and the HTML tag, etc., they're all in there. And you might want to kind of put in a head tag into here and put in your links to your CSS and JavaScript and so forth. Uh, but there's actually a better way of doing that. And you'll notice because we've got this uh, template uh, for a partial, we're actually going to load in the head.html file on every single page. So that's really important because uh, we can separate all of our useful code uh, for different sections of the site uh, and they're actually found in this uh, partials folder here. And you might notice as well that there's also the header and the footer and then the main content is what we're actually going to be uh, using within our index page on our home page. Okay, so let's have a look at the index page again. And you can see here that we've got um, the uh, heading level one tag that we put in uh, previously. I'm just gonna remove that. And what I'm going to do is just uh, use uh, some Hugo templating to define the main block uh, for this page. And you can see that corresponds to the block that we've got here in the base of. So this will basically take any content that's inside of the main block uh, that we're specifying in our pages and uh, put it back into this section here, which is wrapped in a div. Uh, with an ID of content. So now inside this main block, what I can do is put any content that I want to appear on the home page. So I'm just going to start off with a header, a uh, header tag, and I'm just going to give it a class of home page header, which we'll target with our CSS in just a moment. And also I'm going to put a div inside here with a class of container. And then inside here, we're just going to put a heading level one tag. And you might be tempted to put something like, you know, code website or whatever the name is of your blog. Uh, but what we can actually do is make the theme a little bit more reusable because uh, obviously that would appear on any site that you used it on. 
by actually taking the title from the config.toml file of our Hugo, uh, our Hugo site. So here you can see we've got a, an, an option or a variable here, a parameter called title, which is set as my new Hugo site at the moment. Mm -hmm. So we can actually use that inside of here rather than hard coding a title. And because it's a kind of global parameter, we can just use that, uh, can access it by using dot title. And if we just save that now and go reload that on the site, uh, it's actually blank. So we've probably got a problem somewhere. Um, okay, so in the define, we've got this extra space here, which we don't want. So let's just remove that. Going back to the uh, site again, you can see now this has been taken from the config.toml file and it's not something that's hard coded into the theme. So you want to try and reuse as many parameters and things that you can within your theme where possible. So that's the simple header that we can put onto our page. Uh, the other thing we might want to do on our home page is to display some posts. It was very similar in the paper theme that we had. Uh, so I'm going to define a main tag and again have a a div with a class of container. Uh, we're going to put some styles on that in just a second. And then what we want to do is actually use a, a bit of templating from Hugo uh, to grab a list of all of the site's uh, posts. So we do that by using this uh, range uh, command here for this templating. So we say where the we're getting all of the regular pages that have got a type of posts. And if you followed the last few tutorials, you would have seen uh, when we created our posts in our, our content folder, uh, they were in a, a file called a folder, sorry, called posts. And there was a couple of uh, posts that we created in there. So that's going to basically loop through all of the posts that are in that directory. So I'm going to be displaying a bit of information about the posts themselves. So the first thing is I want to show the title. So for the title, we can actually access this title property uh, inside of this loop rather than the global config uh, or the, the title of the site that we saw a second ago. This will actually be the title of the post because it's kind of scoped inside of this loop that we're in at the moment. And just to demonstrate that, you can see these are the two titles of the two posts that we've got in uh, Hugo at the moment. And the other thing I want to show as well is the date uh, for the post that when it was created. And for that, I actually need to get the params property. And we saw this in the previous tutorial, how you can access uh, uh, properties or parameters from a particular post. So here we've got in this Hello World post, the date uh, is this uh, date object here. So I can just access that from here uh, in that way inside the loop. And you can see here, I've got the full date for each of uh, the posts. So probably the first thing you wanna do with the date is to actually format it. Uh, and it's got a bit of a strange way to format things with Hugo, but we access a, a sort of a format function on top of the date object. And then you have to kind of specify the format that you want. And the date formatting is a little bit of a mystery, but we just basically provide it with a string of how we would expect the uh, format to appear. So for example, you'd expect to see the day, the month, the date, and the year. And then when you look at the actual um, output of that, it looks a bit like this. So you can see the dates here appearing in that string format. I'm not sure how it exactly works, but you just provide it with the date format and it all automatically does all the uh, hard work for you, which is always good. So uh, there we go. We've got some information about the uh, post, but it'd be nice if we could actually click on these posts so that we can go through to them and read them, otherwise it's a bit useless. So what we're going to do is actually create uh, an anchor uh, or a, a link for this to actually go to. So we're going to put the uh, title within that. We'll keep the date separate. And the href tag uh, is going to be linked to the post itself. It's going to be linked via a permalink property which again, we're going to use Hugo's templating uh, to actually uh, get the value of that. And what we'll find is now we should have a link on the page. Uh, and if we you may not be able to see it, but in the bottom left hand corner of my screen, you can see that it's uh, linking to posts and my new blog. Um, this won't actually work if we actually click these at the moment, uh, because we actually need to create another template file called single to actually display the content of that. Uh, but maybe we'll do that in the next tutorial. So uh, the last thing we're going to do uh, today is just actually get some styling on the page. So first thing we need to do is just uh, put a bit more markup around some of this content and add some classes. So uh, I'm going to give the div that's around the uh, article. Uh, sorry, let's actually create a div for there first. And we're going to give that a class of uh, homepage article. Uh, we'll give the uh, link itself a class of homepage article underscore link. And then we'll just put this uh, date here in a span. And we'll give that a class of 
homepage article underscore date. And just make sure we close the span at the end there. And yep, yeah, we shouldn't see any difference there at all. Uh, okay, so we're going to link some CSS now. So there's two things that we need to do. First, we need to create a CSS file. Uh, and again, this isn't something that's provided by default with the theme. So we just need to do a little bit of work first. So within the CodeBub theme uh, folder, let's create a new folder called Assets. And then inside that Assets folder, I'm going to create a new folder called CSS. And then I'll just create a CSS file in there called main.css. Uh, Let's add a little bit of a reset first of all. So we'll say uh, body uh, is no padding and no margin. And for the home page header uh, class that we created, uh, let me just make sure it's spelled correctly. Home page header. Uh, we'll just say that it's got a background color of something just so we can see it happening. And also some padding. Um, also important, we'll add that container. Uh, div uh, uh, class as well, so we get a kind of a, a margin on either side of the app. So uh, let's just say the width is 1000 pixels and also the margin is auto on the left and right. So as it stands at the moment that CSS won't be applied to our site, so we need to link it and how do you normally link CSS? Where well, you put a link tag in the head property of your document. So let's go over to our partial that I mentioned before uh, for how we can actually get um, a head uh, tag into uh, each document on the page. So we'll just create a simple head tag and then you could just put a link and then somehow work out how this uh, actually links to the uh, star sheet, uh, but things can change, especially when you build things over time as well. So what we're going to do is use some uh, Hugo templating again to actually get the uh, CSS uh, resource that we just created a moment ago. So we're going to create a variable inside of our template here called styles, and it's basically going to be the result of getting the main.css file. And then once you've got that, that styles variable, what we can do is just access its relative permalink, make sure I'm spelling that correctly. And with that, we should find that we get a link tag in each head, in each document page uh, that is referencing our main.css file. And all being well, we should find that our CSS is now linked. Uh, we might need to restart our server, so I'm just going to make sure uh, that that file is registered. So let's just load the new site up there. There you go, you can see some styles are now being applied. Uh, we've got our header uh, with our background color and also the container uh, is displaying as well and, and showing us that margin. So that's how you'd link style sheets to your Hugo uh, theme. Uh, let's just go back over to the uh, CSS file. I'm just going to paste in some additional styles here uh, just for the article, the link and the date uh, elements that we created. I'll have a look at that again. Let's go back. And you can see now that there's uh, some additional styling that's being applied. And really it's down to your creativity of how you actually create those styles and, and what you're actually after with your theme. So there you go, we've got a working theme now with our, some custom styles being applied. Um, it's uh, a lot of work to actually get that set up and stuff, but once you get going, uh, it's fairly simple to uh, start using the Hugo templating and you probably find yourself just uh, referencing the documentation quite well, but hopefully I've given you enough there to get started on uh, displaying posts uh, on your page and you can start working with other parameters within the post content as well, such as if you've added featured images as well, um, but just some ideas there for getting you started. Uh, probably what we'll do next time is just have a look at linking the single post as well so we can get the, the content of the actual uh, markdown post itself and display that within the page. And then we'll probably look at some tips and tricks for things like minifying your code uh, and getting things ready and built for production. Uh, but that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful. I'll see you next time.